Vegas Generation Aircraft is a flight activity center. Uh, we pride ourselves on having airplanes and, and helicopters that fly and that people can truly have a full sensory experience. It's one thing to just be able to see it, uh, but to be able to see it and touch it and hear it and smell it and feel it when you're sitting in the seats, the vibration, um, to see the, the smoke come out of the engines, you can't get that from just walking by a static display. We have the B-25 bomber, the Pacific Prowler. Uh, we have the 1942 C-47, also known as a DC-3. We have an A-26K. Uh, we have a Huey helicopter. And we have a CG-4A Waco glider that is in a variety of pieces and boxes that will be our next project to start restoration on. If we don't continue to actively pursue monetary donations and revenue streams, we will cease to exist. Um, we receive no government funding, we have no um, key underwriter, if you will, for our services uh, to keep these planes going. It is a very costly uh, passion. Um, everything about vintage aircraft is expensive. Our 1942 C-47 came off the assembly line as a DC-3. It was supposed to be purchased by TWA, but it was drafted into military service and sent overseas to Europe. Uh, when she came back, she was sold to various airlines as a DC-3 until she was purchased by the President of Mexico. He used it as his personal plane and put in a full galley kitchen, um, restrooms, a wraparound sofa. It was um, quite a sight. And he also installed picture windows. Um, when he was finished with it, he sold it to a skydive operation in Florida. The skydive operation uh, ripped all the, the good stuff out, left the picture windows, and began flying jumpers. Um, we purchased it from um, the Skydiver Group in 2005. Everything we've done is, it has been to strive to make her open to the public so that they can experience it in the way she was intended to be experienced, you know, back in the 40s. And that includes putting in 1942 passenger seats, uh, seat belts and all. And um, so that's, what, that's how we got to the plane that we have today. Uh, one person described it as, you know, you're sitting in this this airplane with exposed wiring and frames and no insulation and you just see the skins and the holes in the skins and he said they start it up and it smokes and and shakes and the, and then and they and they bring the throttle up and it starts to vibrate and then your chest starts to pound and every sense in your in your body becomes alive and your nerves are pounding and then they start the other engine uh, pretty much everyone in, alive is heart of a goonie bird we have a 1942 B-25 bomber. She was one of the last bombers to come off the assembly line and she did not see combat. Um, she was actually flown more in movies. Now this was before Greatest Generation Aircraft purchased her. Uh, but she's been in more movies than any bomber in the history uh, that still fly today. There's only about uh, 25 B-25s left in the world. Of those, only a handful are still flying. Um, we'd like to return ours to the ranks of the flying just as soon as possible. Uh, she's got some corrosion issues and uh, we're looking at a $200,000 price tag to get her back in the air. We are fighting time. Time is the enemy. Time, uh, no, no man's given more. Time and tide waits for no man and that's as much true of these aircraft as it is a boat. Uh, we, we don't know how much longer we'll be able to get the spares. We don't know how much longer that the equipment and airframe, there's only so many cycles you can put on these aircraft. Uh, you, you know, significant structural restoration. You're basically rebuilding it by hand to keep them in flight. But it is, it is a battle against time. It, it's like, a, it's a living organism. And as with almost all living organisms, they uh, slowly decay. And we are fighting an uphill battle to keep a very, uh, healthy program together as long as you possibly can. But there will be a day in some not too distant point when probably the last cylinder will fire on an old warbird from the Second World War and the world will never hear that sound again. We have an A26A, which is also referred to as a B26K, the only K model of a B26 left in the world that will fly. Um, our restoration efforts started by finding it in a field and we got a ferry permit to bring it to Fort Worth and when we got her into the hangar and started taking her apart, 
uh, there were bird nests, I mean, literally hundreds and hundreds of bird's nests in the wings that we cleaned out. Special K, as we call her, was born in about 1945. It was delivered to the Air Force in time to go to England for World War II and made it through to the end. Later was brought home. It spent many years as doing odd jobs, target toes, that sort of thing. But in 1961, it's turned into a trainer for the uh, A-26 pilots that were going to go to Vietnam. 1964-65, the Air Force decided the airplane needed rebuilding. So they took 40 of these A-26s left over from World War II and uh, converted them into what they call the B-26K, or later when it went to Thailand, it was called the A-26A due to some political reasons. Anyway, 40 airplanes were uh, modified bigger engines, bigger payloads, do everything better than it did before. Uh, was given a special operations mission and uh, it flew over the uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail at night uh, in Laos, interdicting uh, convoys of supplies that the North Vietnamese were uh, sending south. This is the last airplane that was produced off the uh, Onmark engineering line. It is the last airplane that's still flying out of that group. When you're working on the plane, um, it doesn't fly without parts. Um, you know, 99% of the time when you're doing maintenance, you're going to need something. A spark plug, you know, a tire, uh, a fuel pump, and everything is hard to find. Um, are extremely expensive because someone has three of them and they don't want to let them go. These airplanes require tons and tons and tons of money. We for instance, we rebuilt our carburetors. Um, we've rebuilt our propellers. Those each, each of those little operations cost around seven grand. And if people don't step up and keep this thing moving, it'll be gone. In another 20 years, there won't be any of these airplanes left in the air. This is one of passion and history and a commitment. It's a, it's a different kind of sponsorship and it takes an understanding of, of these birds will not be in the air forever. We are open to partner with people that share that passion for paying tribute to our veterans and our military and our aircraft. Um, it is a 501c3, it is tax deductible, but more than that, it's a, it's a commitment to saying thank you for what the aircraft and their crews did uh, throughout the history of our country, and we think that's pretty important.